You know, I love gouache painting and I also love travel sketchbooks. And believe it or not, I never thought of doing them with gouache. And I want to connect those two worlds. So let's prepare a gouache travel kit so I can have fun in my next trip. Before that, I want to clarify what is a travel sketchbook for me. When I look back at my travel sketchbooks, all the memories come back. The people I was traveling with, the place, cities, the architecture, surroundings, the museums. I like to keep a track of everything. And sometimes I write a lot of things inside. Sometimes I don't. I take a lot of photos, of course, but I think the power of something you have drawn on location or not doesn't really matter to me. It's the most important is having fond memories of where I've been. Travel sketchbooks can be made on site during the trip or after the trip because sometimes you are with other people and they don't want to wait for you when you are drawing, sketching. So you can do a mix of both. Just take a photo on site so you have the colors and the shapes available when you are ready to work on it or just make the sketch on site and paint after. And for this, I have a complete class about make your travel sketchbook after your trip. I link this in the description below. So I have tried different things over the years. And for this one, as it is gouache, it's a bit different. So of course I can carry the tubes, but is it really handy? Because you have to squeeze the paint, so you need a palette that you will close after. Okay, I thought about using this small airtight palette, but the lid is very small. I'm not sure I have enough space to make my mixes because I'm getting quite messy when I'm painting. And I'm used to my small watercolor palette. And what I like is it has separate wells where I can mix the paint. I wanted the same thing for gouache. I think the easiest option is to get dry gouache. And I know, I said multiple times that gouache should be used creamy, but only fools don't change their mind. So I'm maybe changing my mind about gouache. And also I've been watching Sarah Burns videos. If you don't know her, you have a link in the description. And she is doing an intense comparison between different gouache brands, how they dry well or not. My goal is to have the easiest, simple setup I can get with dry gouache. I've bought recently Daniel Smith gouache and I've heard this one is re-wetting very well once it's dry. I've made a full review of Daniel Smith gouache if you want to watch it. I link it in the description below. I bought this cute little palette. It's metallic, it's magnetic and you have a secure lid you need to press to open. And the pans are sitting on a magnetic part. And here you can make your mixes. It's really tiny. <coughs> Look at that. Size of my hand, which is dirty. And I want to fill it with Daniel Smith mainly because I've heard they behave beautifully when dry and they can reactivate easily. Let's see if I can make some nice pans. And as I said in my previous video where I was reviewing Daniel Smith's gouache, I don't have magenta. They do have magenta, but I wasn't able to buy some. It was out of stock and I didn't want for it to come back. So I will take magenta from Holbein. And we'll see if this one is reacting very well when it's dry. You see the difference of consistency? This one is more like toothpaste. The other one was more like ketchup. I need two jars of white. I'm not really precious when I'm doing that. I know some people will take ages and stir very well. I'm too lazy to do that. I think here I need some cobalt blue. Brown. Burns, you know. Ultramarine blue. I guess I could reorganize that so they don't touch. Thinking out loud. Should have thought about that before squeezing the colors. Mm, don't do what I do. Alright, 
let's try that. <laughs> this should fit in. Yep. So different brands. This one is PBO. It's nice olive green. This one is Windsor and Newton. It's permanent green deep and some cobalt green. So this is Turner. Ah, it's very liquid, separating the binder from the paint. So I'm afraid this one won't dry very well. And let this outside and dry. Is this video helpful? Are you learning something? If so, please put the like button. It's somewhere here, I think. It's not a big deal for you, but it's really important for me because this way YouTube knows this is a good video, that you like it and that it can show it to more people. This is the most important. More people need to love gouache. Thank you. Merci. And now that it's fully dry, let's test the paint before actually using it in my sketchbook. Right, so first thing you notice is <laughs> crumbles. So this green, which is a uh, Windsor and Newton, doesn't dry very well. Also, I haven't been very precious when doing it. Uh, of course, I could spray that, but I won't carry a sprayer with me. So I will use just my water brush and see if I can get something. Maybe if I add water, I can glue the crumbles together. Okay, so it looks like intense watercolor. And you need a kind of a towel or something to clean your brush. And gouache is really heavily tinted, so you might use a lot. Okay, so the yellow is reactivating quite well. Can I mix? Yeah, I can mix directly on the paper. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing to do. Or I can mix on the palettes. Okay, can I squeeze the paint? Yeah, I think it will look like very intense watercolor when painting on location. I think one of the two whites will get dirty quite soon and the other one I will try to keep it white. Okay, so you can have opaque colors. This is the kind of thing I do with watercolor as well. I have white gouache on my palette of watercolor. And can I work with this crumbled one? Very transparent. I won't get back to the opacity of it, I think. I think if I want to get the opacity of green, I will have to add white and white will weaken my strength. Yeah. Ah, this one, I think I need to squeeze more paint inside because it's not really handy to have this part going. <laughs> Yeah, and this one had a lot of separation between the binder and the paint, and actually it went fine. So things to note, you will need a ton of water in your brush because I have to squeeze a lot to get clean, and you will need a lot of tissues or whatever. Now that I have the most important part, which is the paint, let's talk about the rest of my travel kit. I need my travel kit to be really light, portable, easy to grab, easy to use. I don't want to have anything to install anywhere. Just want to grab this in my bag and draw what I see just in front of me, just on the go. I don't want to have an easel because it's too much fuss. I don't want to carry water with me, so the easiest option is water brushes. It's convenient because you can fill it anywhere. To draw, I will carry a criterion because you don't need a sharpener and a kneadable eraser. This one is kind of old, but doing the job. And I also have a pen, which is really this one specifically. It's a Faber-Castell. 
it's uh, light fast waterproof and also it works really well on gouache the nib doesn't get clogged by the gouache unlike other brands that I have tried and mm, let's talk about sketchbook I like to have something really small look at that the size of my hand it's a Stillman and Burn Zeta series because I like to have white paper and not ivory paper and this one is great for mixed media but it's not great for watercolor the paint is not really diffusing inside and you cannot get nice gradients it's kind of sitting inside the paper and not moving really well so i wanted to go for gouache inside this one and the requirement is to open flat with my little palette so I can work just this way. I will add just a little clip. And now I can really work easily. If you are at the restaurant, for example, you don't take too much space with that. You can paint on your lap. You can paint standing and having this on some place that you can place it on. It's really very, very handy. This is all I need in my gouache travel kit and everything will fit in this small pooch, which is very convenient because it's attached to my backpack. Everything fits inside easily. Maybe just place it this way. Closing. And it weighs 387 grams. Not bad, I would say, for a complete travel gouache kit. I'm really excited to test this new setup. This will be in the next video. That will be here when it's available. See you there. And I like... I like <laughs>